Welcome aboard, sports fans. This is uh, Dev and M, and I'm sitting here with my friend... Jimbo Slice. And we're here watching the PTO Finals. This is the end of Season 8, boys and girls. Wonderful season we've had this year, Devin. Fantastic. I mean, to uh, to have come to the end of uh, your first term as a league boss, to have had the kind of turnout, and more importantly, the kind of completion rate with regard to the, uh, the bounty system that you put in place this season... Uh, it must make you feel pretty proud. It was pretty fantastic. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I looked at, uh, I mean, we're going to get into our two players tonight and their matches and their, their season that they've had this year. But I just I wanted to pause and talk about um, your, uh, your idea for the bounty system. And, and you looked at how many players actually got multiple league bonus points for fielding three of the toughest ships to fly well in the game during their yeah. PTL matches or random matches. But what made you come up with that idea? Uh, I wanted, we were getting complaints in the league about people just running six or seven near meta lists. Okay. Right? So this was a problem that Aaron and I were struggling with, and how do we fix it? And we didn't want to mess with the competitive format. We didn't want to ban ships, right? We didn't want to tell people what they couldn't fly, but we just rewarded them for flying subpar ships. So if you flew an E Wing that wasn't Cornhorn, if you flew a Kirax, Without its new upgrades, yeah, they're before, not they're not out yet. Before the title, because now, before it's, the title. now, now it's, it's not a crummy ship. Now anymore. it's not bad anymore. <laughs> and if you flew a Punisher, you got a bonus point. Well, I you can know, tell you the most fun that I had this entire season. Yeah, was the match where I flew a Punisher against Kelvin. Yeah, and it was a razor's edge. Um, Did that go well match. for you? It was great actually because I had. Uh, well, I'll get through the list, but it was sure. Uh, it was a uh, like. I think it was like a 55 point death rain or something ridiculous like so, that. So both of these guys are flying a tawny scout lists into the into the top, but they got here through random matches and flying Kiraxes and winning random games and like it they've they've brought out their big guns. They wanted to have an ace off tonight, but they got here flying Punishers and Kirax. They earned the right, I feel, to to have a fen off in the end. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you say that, Deb, because, you know, we talk about Montreux, the PTL, flying casual, providing a, an approachable environment for some of the new players. But when you get to the top two table yeah. and you've been here before like Jeff has or you've been here before like Kelvin has, yeah. in the words of our immortal uh, little green friend, do or do not, there is no try. Now, I, I want to talk about their lists before we get into their seasons. Sure. Jeff's got initiative. Why don't you start? Sure. So we've got a, a standard Fenrau, a Tawny, Auto Thrusters, and Concord Dawn. I, it's an interesting position here where he sort of like lined him and Calvel up towards towards uh, the contracted scout. He's got a, a an ace after my heart, Cavill. Cavill's a good ace. I mean, I like him. And and uh, twin laser turret, unhinged vector thrusters, that's going to be a fun ship. He's going to have focus. Target lock, he's going to be able to reposition. As you were saying before the match, he's going to be able to get in there and block some of those, those two Dangar and Fen PS9 aces. Well, those are going to be fully modded four die. Yeah. TLT shots. Oh, and yeah. I don't care how fen your row is, those are tough to dodge. No, I've been saying Cavill, I don't think Sync Turret is very good. Now, I know we differ on that. You and I have a difference of opinion. We have a difference that. of opinion on that. But on Cavill, Sync Turret is going to be a brute. Four especially, dice out of arc. Especially with Unhinged. Yeah. Because you just do the green and get the target. Absolutely. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, like, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, both our players are... Pilot you, skill nine, four dice... Focus target lock, just smash. It is going to smash. It's right. just, it's going to be brutal. I mean, both of our players are using some uh, some neat tricks. They're using some new new tricks. We got a knowledge on the other side. Yeah, and fin finish off with Jesse. Yeah. Isn't? Now, the, the scout's interesting because he's got rig cargo shoot and intelligence agent. So he's running something similar to what we're starting to see in the States with Duncan Howard and, and some of those Carolina boys running uh, their changes to Fenneru, right? With, oh, we uh, got a bump from Cavill. Not the end of the world. Uh, that happens. I mean, Jeff's an Imperial Ace player. But he's yeah. literally run out of Imperial Aces he's, to he's, fly. He's literally run out of Imperial Aces. I think Kelvin had some Aces, but he's been flying this list competitively for uh, for a couple of store champs now. Yeah, you made and, it to uh, the you made it to the final table at the Peterborough yeah. uh, Grey Guardian Game Store Championship, which was a really great event put on by Greg Saul and the folks up in Peterborough. We thank them for having some of us out there. And, and uh, what's what's that? What what are they called now? The the Peterborough Prototype League. I think that's maybe. I think, I think that's think what they're called now. That's an excellent name choice. If I, I, do say I so. you know, it's a little flattering. 
just a little flattering. It's nice to know that they're that that the model that yeah. many of us have been working under is a model that other communities look at and see as one that's good to work. So what's with. interesting about the scout, right? It's got the rig cargo chute, which is always a threat that, that Kelvin's gonna have to be looking out Especially for. Especially with a tiny mine. And he's got intelligence agent, so he knows where Kelvin's gonna be going for that block from Cavill, for that block from the contracted scout. And you know what? Fen Rao, Fen Rao Rao, Rao 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 your boats. He's got initiative, so he can block with Fen Rao. You can block Fen with Fen and shoot something else, which is great. I mean, it's very interesting as well because that one point crew on the scout, the synergy with the proton torpedo is often to take the choice of Boba Fett. I mean, in this particular matchup, Jeff obviously not knowing what Kelvin would have brought to the table, having Boba Fett and being able to land a crit on Dengar and, and Boba Fett off the punishing one title yeah. is great, but. It's, I would think, a very equal trade to be able to see what those higher PS ships and the nine with uh, without the initiative is going to do, to your point, to block them. So we know that Kelvin's a fantastic dogfighting um, uh, player, but then again, so is Jeff. So I think we're yeah. going to get a corker of a match tonight. I'm loving uh, Kelvin's list as well. Uh, I can't say that he created it, but I've seen him blow it like a boss. I was, I was getting some practice reps in with Kelvin last night. And I was flying quick draw, backdraft, Omega Leader, and he flew something similar. A couple of Sikhs, Fenrau, and a contracted scout, or Manaru. Mm. And, oh, no, Asajj. Oh, Asajj yeah. and Eldra, uh, Fen, and Sonny Bounder. And uh, so we've, I we've, punished him. I punished we've him a few Sunny times. We've seen Sonny Bounder on some of the other stream matches that we've had so far this season. This is the first appearance of Inaldra, Inaldra which, I mean, the pilot ability of Inaldra is not too relevant in this particular matchup. It says that if... She's a cheap Atani she, cheap it. battery. She's it's what she does. She's a 14-point Atani Mind Link battery, which is fantastic. Inaldra's pilot ability says you may spend a shield when attacking or defending to reroll as many dice as you like. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think Kelvin's probably going to do that. He's probably going to keep Inaldra in a safe place behind his heavy-hitting aces to power that Atani Mind Link uh, action economy. I think that's an excellent segue into the rest of Kelvin's list, so why don't you walk through Fen and Dengar? Yeah, we got a standard uh, Atani Fen, just like Jeff's one with Mind Link title and thrusters. And then a pretty, um, I wouldn't call it a budget Dengar. I would call it a simple Dengar. It has... Efficient Dengar. It's a very efficient Dengar. The combination on a Jump Master with the, the synergy between the Jump Master dial, the K4 security droid making all your threes green, and the unhinged Astro... Sorry, uh, unhinged makes all the threes green, and the K4 says if you do a green, uh, you get a free target lock. Essentially means that half of the Jump Master's dial gives them a free target lock. And for somebody like Kelvin, who's a, a dogfighting... Uh, player, for him to be able to move his Dengar first before Fen, and then be able to measure range acquiring that target lock and give yeah. him that type of board information. We saw how key that was at the Worlds this year with Justin Foy beating Nan Torres. Yeah, absolutely with the, with the Dengar tell list. So Kelvin just giving negative uh, shits about that's, that's, anything. That's what Fen Rao wants to do, Why right? Fen Rao, Fen in Rao wants to be range 3 or range 1. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Dengar's coming in too. I think we've got a... I don't know if we're going to have time to go through their seasons. This is going to be a fast game, Tim. I think they're going to get into combat quickly, but I hope that we're going to get enough time because both of these players have had phenomenal seasons. Um, let's see how now here's the... Here's uh, the K4. Let's, and yeah. you can see how he's barrel-rolled Fen out of the, right, out of the way giving him room next turn for Dengar to go past and do some of that ranged measuring shenanigans you were talking about. Because they'll all already have focuses because of Inaldra, who's sitting there in the back. Now, I mean, our, our both of our disdains for the Jumpmaster 5000 aside, Dev, we've got two excellent uh, positioning um, plays by our Jumpmaster players here. We've got... Kelvin coming up the right side of the board, so the majority of the maneuvers he's going to be taking are going to be lefts and greens. And they're still out. And they're just out. So it looks like we're going to trade range three shots from Fens this round. Jeff having the double focus of economy. So we'll see who rolls dice better in a second here, Dev. I mean, not not Jeff today. He's, going to spend, he's, got, he's got two focuses, so... Got two he's, only, he's only taking one shot in response. Four dice back. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. I mean, laughs at it maniacally. I mean, that's a statistically average roll with auto thrusters. It's just not going to do damage. Unless you've got crack shot. You know, Fen does not have crack shot here. And but Jeff and I laughs maniacally like, right look. back at it. Look. So I really think that the both players are going to take a couple of minutes to consider 
this next key range one engagement because Fen loves being at range one. Yeah. Why don't you take the uh, oh Dengar might have a shot on the scout here. I might be wrong. No, I don't think so. There's so checking, tonight's but... tonight's judge for the event is uh, our, no. our fearless leader Dave Grohl. I mean Aaron P. My mistake. Mm -hmm. Uh, no shots from Dengar there. We're just moving rocks around like it's yeah, our it's, job. Hey, I'm, I don't see Joe Silva on the table. I know, honestly. But um, now that we're going to the planning I mean, phase... I love, I love these first couple of games. So Jeff started his season off playing random matches. So if you play a random match, you get an extra league point. And both of you have to agree and you both play a rando. You both randomize your list through Fab Squadron Generator. Which I have to register a complaint here, Tim, is getting less random. I we're getting, getting, less we're getting it's solid getting, It's lists. getting less janky and it's, ridiculous. It's, they used to be awful, and now they're passable. And this is upsetting, and I don't know if we can do this anymore. It's just because you want all those turretless hawks in your games, that's right. Right, yeah, exactly. So Jeff played Emily's first match, and Emily's a great player. Local store champ, she's got runs her quad TLT still, just smash people in the face. And she flew a B-Wing, a Y-Wing, an ARC, and Captain Rex. And... I love Jeff's list. This is Great. this is a random list. This is a random. He won with this, folks. Yeah. Mauler Mythal with lightning reflexes and targeting computer. Then you get the target lock there for those extra dice. Epsilon Ace with calm relay and shield upgrade, so you can keep that pilot skill 12. Is my favorite. Glaive with assault missile twin ion mark one and wired. So that's uh, a that's a tie defender that with neither title. Right. That has issues stressing itself. Yep. And an academy pilot with stealth device. The, it's a very useful location for stealth device. The valedictorian of that right. academy class. Jeff won that to 176, so it sounds like Epsilon has survived and, uh, and carried that game at pilot skill 12. Then he played um, a local John Hahn, who I beat at the, in the top eight. Um, and I beat just to uh, narrowly make my way into the top eight. Phenomenal player. Had a great season. Yeah. And Jeff flew uh, Graz the Hunter. This is another random match. Graz the Hunter with concussion missiles and chips. Ketsu with elusiveness. I don't even know what that does, Tim. It's uh, take a stress to make an attacker reroll one die. That sounds bad, Tim. It's terrible on Ketsu. It's horrible. Glad to hear. Well, she's got the greens to clear it. She does. She okay. does. All yeah. right. Shadowcasters love. And Suckus in a G1. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad ship. I believe that the G1 Starfighter is now the worst ship in Scum. It's either that or the, or the aggressor. I think it's the Z95 except Nadru. Katsu is still pretty good. He's like a 16-point uh, focus battery. Uh, yeah, fair enough. 15. Yeah. And uh, Zaka said snapshot and inspiring recruit. Love it. So he can help pull the stress off of Ketsu. There we go. All right. Uh, he flew against... Um, John was playing Tycho uh, with Trickshot, a Blue-Wing Pathfinder, a U-Wing Blue Squadron Pathfinder, and uh, Zeb in the TIE Fighter, and uh, Blue Squadron Novice. My God. A T-70 X-Wing that took Hyperwave Com Scanner, because apparently they can do that. Yeah, yeah, they can. That was great. That, that, I'm sure that Evade came into... One point well spent. Super handy in the first round of combat. <laughs> so he played uh, another player. His third match was against Robert McGregor, a newer player here at the PTL. Rob's been really good. You know, he's been solid with his uh, list choices. He's been sticking to one yeah. strategy, but he's been getting those reps in and getting really good at starting to judge ranges and uh, and realize that you got to start flanking and stuff. I'm really impressed with his progress. Yeah, I played him as well. We had like a swarm on swarm off, and we had a, a great match. Yeah. It was, I was giving him pointers, and it was fantastic. He ran Garvin Drace, as we all do. We go for those uh, named X-Wings at the beginning of our X-Wing careers with R2 and Integrated. Gold Squadron with Ion, and two B-Wings with FCS, and one attack with Torpedo. This looks like a wave... Good God. This but looks like a, a wave lot, two That's a list. lot of hull to chew through. That's, you know, Jeff flew two Concord Don Aces and Asajj. Took them apart, 100-0. Yeah, I've played that list too. Asajj and two Concords is not friendly. Yeah. So he played uh, Amir, who's another local player. He paints up ships for us. Amazing artist. Fantastic. Amir flew Captain Rex, Arvel, and Kanan Jarrus. This was a random match because I feel the need when I run into Arvel to, to just express that this was a random match. And Jeff flew What else would you use Arvel? Oh, no, that's right. The uh, original trilogy tournament at, right. one, at 401 hey. Games. Uh, absolutely. There's another one one of the, another one of those coming up, and everyone should be there July 23rd. I can't wait. Hashtag no, fear the air wing. Hashtag makes him dear great again. Yep. And uh, so he flew, Jeff flew a cartel spacer, Catalitos with determination, Cathscart with adaptability and cargo shoot, Cad Solas with VI chips and a plasma torpedo. That's not a bad list. And it took apart Rex and Kane and Jarris there with the A-Wing. 
Well, Jeff's proven time and time again that he can take a list that may not be the best and definitely make it uh, really good. So before we finish off Jeff's uh, list choices for the season, let's just get back to the action here, Dev. Yeah. So we've had a really risky two-turn uh, left from Jeff's uh, jump master. Yeah. And he's acquired a target lock on now, Kelvin. Now, did he end up on the round. rock? I missed that. I was staring at the tablet. No, our uh, our judge for the evening, Aaron, is being very careful with positioning. And, uh, and, and then, so he did the maneuver for Jeff because it was so close, yep. which is great. We saw Kelvin one turn his Analdra away from the action and focus uh, battery up. Yep. Two so he's aces. just off into the corner. Safest place to be is not getting shot at. You got it. And then uh, we've had Jeff put his Cavill oh, that's interesting. in a great place for TLT. I did not see the three bank coming. Yeah, I was thinking a two or a two forward. Um, but he might bump Fen here, or Fen might blow past Fen and uh, end up pointing right at, at Cavill. And Cavill's, Cavill can eat five dice, but he doesn't want to. So it's still a Y-Wing at the end of the day. I mean, it's a really great, interesting call by Jeff here because essentially what he's done is he said, okay, I'm going to guess. Yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. I'm going to guess that Kelvin's going to go. That's going to hurt for Cavill. Cavill first. And if he does, I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to give him a torpedo as a trade because right now Kelvin's at range. My guess is two. If he barrel rolls into range three, I reckon he's going to lose arc on that Y wing. Um, and Cavill can only shoot him with with primaries right now. Yeah, yeah three forward from Dengar bumping Bump. right into Fenrau. Ooh. I Well, thanks to the the, the wonderfulness of Scum, K4 still triggers. He st does that clear. Everybody clinch. Oh. Oh, does it fit? Does it? No. no. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. That was close. Good God. That would have been disastrous. That would not have been good, Dev. Um, we would have seen a barrel roll from... Uh, could have seen a barrel roll from Dengar there. Or maybe just, just delete that Y-Wing in one go. I mean, I feel like Cavill is not going to live... Having, having Jeff... Now, I'm going to take a little bit of glee in this. Jeff deleted Mike Kylo Ren in one round. Oh, we saw that. Now, uh, who eliminated you from uh, the top eight? Jeff. Uh, funny enough, we look at, uh, we're going to go through the rest of the lifts. Now, I was eliminated in the top eight. How was I eliminated from the top eight? You were eliminated from the top four by Jeff. I was oh. eliminated from the top eight. By yeah. Jeff. yeah. So he so, basically went through you and me right. to get here. So I feel like that Cavill's going to get it. So Dengar shooting at Cavill. Dengar rolling hit crit. A one evade from the Y-Wing, taking one shield. I mean, he needed to do more damage there, realistically. Realistically, I think you're right. Uh, unfortunately, Jeff's uh, Fen does not have a shot, so we're going right to Kelvin's Fen. Target locking four out of five. That's not what you want to see. Ooh. Did you not want to spend the focus there? Keeping the defensive token. Jeff missing the bowl completely. Just famously missing the bowl with his defense dice. Uh, spending the focus, avoiding one, taking one shield. So I am shocked. Eight, eight shocked. dice, two damage there, Deb. So, so Kelvin kept the focus to defend against the torpedo then. Not the worst idea. If it's range two, if he didn't have that focus token, that could be a poof fan in one Maybe go. if Dengar had done more damage. This has got to be Cavill. Cavill shooting his primary weapon. Range one at Fen gets the title, evades cleanly. Only because I mean, of the that's title. what Fen Rao does at range one. Ben's more comfortable at range one than he is at range three, Dev. Yeah. So we've got a proton torpedo coming at range two. Uh, so no auto thrusters from the Rao. Four dice with chips and a focus. Oh, disgusting. It's not what you want to see. Didn't need to use the chips because he had a proton torpedo mod I to a yep. crit. We had a blank and an eye yep. and two hits. So perfectly hit and average crit roll going through on uh, Fen Rao, and we're gonna find out what that crit is. Looks like uh, damaged so engine. That means that Fen Rao's turns are. That's probably one of the three that's worst rough. crits. That's a rough crit for Fen Rao. If Fen Rao does any turns, all three of Kelvin's ships become stressed. That is a very unfavorable first exchange for Mr. Lau. But he can always move Fen last. And he's got an Aldra to give him a focus. 100%. So That's what is the beauty of an Aldra in this list, is those two aces can literally do whatever they want. Dengar can bump all day long, and he's got unhinged K4 to give him a target lock. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't think that uh, either of them are out of the uh, match right here. I mean, at this point, Jeff could almost trade his two ships for Fen 
send his fan after Analdra and then send his fan back to try and finish off Dengar. But we'll never know until we see later in the game there, Jeff. There you go. Why don't you go back and finish off uh, Kelvin's season? Well, the next the next list is uh, the next game was a favorite of mine, and I actually got to watch Sabit and Jeff play this out, and it was their interceptor challenge. Oh yes, this is the uh, the famous. So uh, you couldn't run Karnor, okay, and you couldn't run Suntir, and you had to run three interceptors. This is a great example of PTL fly casual where they just talk about it with your opponent before the match starts. This is Absolutely. what we want to do. Okay. So Sumit ran Turfener with push, ion engine, and auto thrusters. Push is an interesting choice on turf. I wouldn't I wouldn't take that on him. Well, you do go up, you do one action, you shoot. And then you PTL off the barrel roll after he shoots. Yeah. Interesting. I yeah. like that. And so you can get in, do damage, and then get out of arc with your, your double reposition after you shoot a Pascal 7. I like a snapshot turf whenever, but that's just me because I'm it's, crazy. It's go fun. Yeah. Lor Lieutenant Laurier, the pilot after all of our hearts, who could, who could bank barrel roll before anyone else, uh, but it took him a stress. So, I don't know, man. It, it hurts the heart. With twin ion and auto thrusters, and there's the, a saber with auto thrusters, and then a scimitar squad bomber, what we call a doom canoe here, with uh, with with the Lord Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, and uh, Jeff won with he had Turfner with PTL and targeting computer. What do you know, right? Two roll guards with PTL and uh, an Imperial trainee with ailerons, the striker. I love it. I love great, it. fantastic. And uh, Jeff won 117, so it was, yep. he's got three double repositioners, right? To I, I think much would have depended on who got initiative in that match. It really did. Similar to our match now, actually. Absolutely. For his sixth, uh, his penultimate match of the season, the regular season, he, uh, he played against Pickles. Oh, the Jeffrey Pickles. A great local player of ours. He's played three seasons now. Recently married. Congratulations on behalf of the whole uh, club and to uh, Jeff and his lovely wife, Megan. Just, just as proud. Uh... Won his first league match in three seasons. His first league win in three seasons. Yeah, I uh, was flabbergasted because he's a good player. He's a very, very good player. And uh, it just he, it just hadn't happened, I guess, is the way it worked out. Oh, interesting here. I, I did imagine this was going to happen, but I didn't actually believe it was going to because I, I was worried he, that Jeff would hit his own He's going to keep it for a threat. So a the rig cargo shoot, folks, is an action. It means as an action you drop the rig cargo token which is that massive piece of junk that you see at the top of your screen right now, which is the now, junk he, that Han oh. Solo dropped uh, when he was trying to get away from he the might have uh, had a green story. in for Fen and just been like, well, if I take the stress, I just green off and... There you go. Not taking any damage from the cargo chute, but Dengar will get stressed. So will everybody else. Uh, you know, and then he, Dengar will encounter the, raw, or the cloud again when he moves. Another stress. Yeah. And I mean... Jeff, I, we thought was in a horrible position, but he traded two oh, shields. Oh, it looks like Kelvin did not see the rig cargo shoot coming. He plugged in a white one turn from Analdra and won't Ooh. be able to focus up his aces. Ooh. I mean, Jeff's in a great position here, right? He traded two shields on Cavill for half hull on Fen with a damaged engine. Like, I did not see that coming, and, uh, oh. Yeah, that hurts. Well, it looks like uh, so far... Cavill doing the scum Y-wing maneuver, the three hard green. Gotta love that. Cavill doing Cavill stuff. And then we've got... Uh, after Cavill's gonna be um, Jeff's Fen coming up, because Jeff's Fen has uh, initiative on here. We're gonna see what... Uh, if he actually did plan on going fast or... No, you know what? He saw himself not hitting that rig cargo shoot. And just said, I'm going. I'm not going to hit my own cargo chute. I've, I've judged the space correctly. I'm going to do he's the one. He's an ace player. I mean, like it takes so much skill to run those three aces. And he's in a more comfortable spot at range one of Dengar out of arc because he gets four dice with being Fen Rao, and he'll get the um, uh, the auto thrusters. Now Fen did it. Was able to do a green there, but without a focus, he's really should should Fen not have that. The two forward, would that not have cleared his stress? I think it, it was a green maneuver. Um, it was a two set. Now, Dengar did a green to clear the, uh, the first stress, but took another stress from the rig cargo chute. And that was green, so of course he gets a target lock. Yeah. And I think I that, don't know. I, I mean, that's... I think Kelvin's uh, unfortunately missed it. I mean, should we go talk to the... 
you know what? Aaron is a very experienced judge. He knows what counts as a missed opportunity and what counts as a, a changing the game state thing. And I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let this one be. Well, we'll trust Aaron. Aaron's a very experienced judge. I think we're fine there, Devin. Uh, so we've got an exchange of shots here coming from. Uh, I think we got a crit going through on Cavill from Dengar. Do we know what that was? Damaged engine. Oh, popular crit today, Dev. Yeah. So Cavill now can no longer do that unhinged three green turn. That scum Y wing thing we literally just talked about two yep. seconds ago. Well, he got it off twice, so good for him. Hey, that Y wing has already survived three times longer than I thought it was going to. I thought I thought he was seriously dead. If Dengar had done more damage first round, Ooh. first go, I think. Uh, oh, that is great when you have an eyeball. We got four dice from Cabell. It is a TLT out of arc on Dengar, taking one. And second shot on Dengar. No, oh, no, he's shooting at Fen. Fen, Fen. Oh, so Fen's, Fen's it on one hole. And, uh, we got a reroll coming here from Jeff for th oh. three. Oh, Kelvin has to roll perfect here. Oh, and, and he, he does. He's got, he's got it. Hashtag deep jade fire. Oh, that is some jade fire that right is there. Some hardcore deep jade fire. I mean, he needed that. Like, Fen can do work on, uh, yo, oh. Fen can do work on, on one hall. He can really punish people, you, for not finishing him off. The contracted scout shooting at Fen uh, dodges that one as well, Jeff. Or Devin. I mean, I he was even in arc. He didn't get all thrusters, got those dice. Now, the really wow. sad thing oh. that I have to bring to light here, though, Dev, is because Kelvin has forgotten to remove that stress token, or maybe we saw it differently. We are out of the thing. Because he would have Finn's gotten stressed. stressed again when Dengar went over the debris. That's true. So all he was missing out on was a focus this round, which, to be fair, he did not need due to those massive natties. No, what he did need, though, was a barrel roll because now a stressed Fen Rao with damaged engine cannot turn well, he'll to be avoid able to, that board edge. He'll be able to do a green. Oh, he's there. Green. Oh, no. Oh, I think oh, a two-bank green might fly Kelvin Sven off the board. Oh. Now maybe we missed something on the exchange of that game state there, but Kelvin's a very experienced player, so maybe he was uh, seeing something that we didn't. But I really thought that Fen was going to barrel roll at that point and, uh, and do it. But we'll see what happens. Why don't you go and finish off uh, Kelvin's lists for the yeah, season? Yeah, we've got his uh, – I was saying he was uh, – I Pickles. was lining up Pickles. Pickles was going for the E-wing uh, bonus points. He flew uh, PTL Itana Bot with uh, two gold squads with bombs and, and dorsal turrets. And yeah, that's what he ran. I guess he's going for extra crits on those. Itana Bot is great for generating crits, though. Yeah. That's true. And Jeff flew Merrick Steel with score to settle. Backstabber Dark Curse, just some great TIE fighters. And uh, Death Rain going for the, uh, the, Punisher, the Punisher bonus there with extra munitions, collision injector. Plasma Torps and Proxy Mines. Good Death Rain. I like that Death Rain. It's not bad. I mean, should be clusters, but proxies will do. They'll do. And then for his last game... Of the regular season. Of yeah. the regular of the regular season. Yeah. He flew against uh, uh, Castle Jackula. Oh, yeah. Right? Jackie flew... Lingdenberry. Lingdenberry. So we saw on stream... Uh, we saw Joe drop it like a custard pie on the floor. That's what we saw. Hashtag floor cake. <laughs> I mean... That's how bad that was, Joe. None of this moving his ships or anything will save him. But uh, and 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 uh, what was what was Jeff flying? Jeff was flying Vessery Backdraft Quick Draw. That's a standard list of his. He knows Jackie's always going to bring something meta, something hard. He brought uh, he brought something very close to his Naboo list and and pulled that one out. So uh, one thing I don't think we have mentioned, other than these. Uh, Extra loud people behind us. Four one games on a Wednesday night. Dev coming to our friends at VWTV Live are nice enough to set us up at the uh, the center of board game nerdom in Toronto, down at uh, Young. Is and that Wesley. these are the top two Imperial players from Naboo? It's true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think it was twenty six and twenty eight. Je yeah, Jeff yeah. was twenty six and twenty eight. So I think um, when they wanted an ace off. They're going to give us an ace off. Both of them were flying aces that day. Uh, Kelvin was flying, I think, uh, aces in a support shuttle. Jeff was just flying three aces as he does. 
And uh, yeah, Jeff was flying a Thai D Vessery at Naboo. Yeah. And Kelvin there was had quite a few uh, of those Thai Ds around. I love that hateful eight list. Yeah. It's great. Uh, and then Kelvin had Omega Leader Inquisitor Strident. Yeah. Yeah. Strident's amazing. Well, especially for the extra action economy on all both the Omega Leader. All the are two points over costed, but good luck hitting Omega Leader when he's when she's got three tokens every turn, right? And if you and you can coordinate a pilot skill force, so you get that pre-boost barrel roll. Caught a lot of people uh, off guard. And then for Kelvin's top, oh, sorry, for Jeff's uh, top eight match, he played. No, I don't know. This is he, he played, played some, some scrub. I don't some know. scrub called Tim. So you ran. I, I would, I I would like to note. I would like to note the score. What were you doing? I wanted to have an ace off with Jeff. I, I mean, uh, like who doesn't? I really wanted to have an ace off. I had. I had oh, this uh, is really interesting. Where he's positioned Cavill to chase, just to jump back into the game for a second before before we talk about your game because there's actually action going on here. Jeff beat me. End of story. Yeah, Jeff. Not not bad. It was 34-26. That was a great that was game. A, that's a tight ace off. That's what you want to see. One of the best games I've played in a long time. Jeff and I just... And he was flying Rebels. Like, what the heck? A regen Rebel bigs list against uh, some Imperial Aces, and it came down to the last die roll on the last is game. Is that off the board? We're that having That is the... a... Oh, that's, oh, that's a heartbreak. That's that is rough. So, yeah, um, we're, we've got Dengar uh, left against the contracted scout. And, and you know, Dengar ben... can do it. Dengar's got that revenge shot every time. I mean, Fenrir was dead anyway. No, that was a white right-hand turn from the jump master. Uh, looks like Aaron's going to rule that in fair play, but Dengar's stress anyway, so it doesn't matter a ton. And he's still got to focus because of Naldra. Yep, and if the scout fires at Dengar, then Dengar will get to shoot back. Looks like we've got just barely a range three shot from Fen on Dengar. Now, this also is not a bad location for Dengar to use those inertial dampeners he's got. It's very true, Dev. I mean, because he'll take a second stress token, but it's Dengar. He doesn't always care, because Anolja's giving him the focus, uh, and right? he's taking damage. No, he's just going to eat all the shields. All right. Dengar taking three shields. So I'll get into... Uh, I'll get into oh, no, no. He spent the focus. He did he spend the focus? The focus. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. I think that that's probably range one, point to point, and the attack is an arc, so... Hey. Uh, he's got range three obstructed on the Y wing. He's gonna take the range three obstructed shot. One hit. Range Cavill three rolling three and evades cleanly with one evade. I mean, uh, Y wing dream. Yeah, but it's a four die, uh, Cavill. Now there's a, a pretty little PTL crit token there, isn't there? That's uh, Cavill's damage engine uh, yeah. crit token from the PTL open. No good. Oh, that mean another one going through on Dengar. No Jade Fire this turn. I think the the ice is cracking under Kelvin's feet at this point, Dev. Ooh. That looks like another one going through from the TLT. Oh, Billy. Uh, and Aldra just poodling off over there in the corner, not getting a shot. Uh, this the turn. contracted scout is 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 going to shoot him. Well, at this point, Jeff's got such a point advantage; it, it would be ungentlemanly to not shoot at this point. Oh, taking one on that though. Taking the crit on Dengar Hull. Let's see what that is. Oh, that's a direct hit there. So Dengar the, the down revenge, to two health. The revenge shot doing nothing. Just blanking out again. Just one hit there. Oh. Deep jade fire again from... Uh, oh. Jeff hasn't had to roll a lot of evade dice. Jeff's had a great game so far. You know, um, I don't think that we're going to get a chance to uh, to go through as much as we wanted to, Dev, but I'll... Uh, I warned you. I'll I warned you. I'll say that uh, Kelvin finished fourth overall in the season. Jeff finished first overall in the season. Yeah. yeah, Kelvin had a record of six and one with three bonus points from the uh, the bounties that you put up this year. Ooh. He had an MOV of six hundred and thirty-seven, so he literally only lost. Sorry, he, he uh, it was points killed because we do things a little bit differently. Yeah, uh, he had twenty-nine league points overall and a strength of schedule of 0.37, which is middle of the pack. Yeah, he had a very respectable season. He played against uh, myself in the first match, beat me one hundred twenty-six. Played against Scott Moore, beat him 174. Great imperial, great local imperial player. Likes his, loves his punishers and bombers. Does yeah, he, uh, he won 100 nothing against some scrub called Devin Monkhouse. I don't know. Yeah, who look, I, I just I don't want to talk about it. I don't know how to fly whisper. All good. Uh, he won 100 to 50 against Nicholas Bars, who's a great imperial player as well. Yeah, local and DJ, great. Uh, uh, Kelvin has actually flown double A wings and double Sinars in like four of his lists this season. It's he's good with those pilots, man. Yeah. Uh, he All right, here we have uh, the contracted scout jumping back into the game, guys. Barrel rolling in to block Dengar, and this is why I was saying he's might, he might spend the inertial dampeners here. 
Well, uh, Jeff probably used Intelligence Agent and Kelvin told him what he was doing, so Jeff knows but that... But the inertial dampener is you choose before you reveal. Correct. So Dengar can just say, I'm going to stay put, take a second stress token, and, and try and delete that scout. But yeah. At this point, I don't know if he's going to be able to. Naldra doing a... I mean, at, at, at this point, Naldra has got to come in and start picking up some of the slack. She can't replace Fen, but she can put pressure on Cavill. She can start tanking TLT shots instead of Dengar. But, I mean, I I don't see Jeff not shooting Dengar because it doesn't matter what's going to happen. Jeff obviously think, doing a one turn or one mag, which might seem uh, counterintuitive to some people if it weren't for the wonderful two-point upgrade which goes on Y-Wings as good as peanut butter goes on toast, which is vector yeah. thrusters. Now, he might be an arc, which means he doesn't get the extra dice, but, ooh, Dengar's not going to enjoy a TLT, a contracted scout, and Fenrau all hitting him at the same time with two hull left. And he doesn't have countermeasures. He doesn't have glitter stem. He's not a big, fat Dengar. Uh, so, Kelvin... Uh, Played dash and two A-wings against Nick Bars. He played Mike Reverso as well. A great local uh, player. Got to the top of the PTL flying three T-70s. I love it was Mike's very three, popular online. Mike's three T-70 list is, is so sexy. I love it. No, uh, so we're seeing Kelvin go for the bump. It does block one shot on him. I mean, one of the most reliable green dice that you can roll in this game, Dev not having to roll him. Yeah. Right? If he if he inertial dampeners, he's not... Uh, he's taking three shots. If, and he, he, if did, he bumps he did the scout, give, he's only taking two. He did give Jeff initiative, so his Jeff's Fen Rao is going to shoot before Dengar. And there's an entirely real possibility that if he rotates enough, he'll have Fen Rao at arc and be able oh, to do that. Oh, I don't think that's happening. No, I don't think you're right. That big base ship block is huge. That intelligence agent... A little better than Boba right now. Paying dividends in this end, yeah, that's for sure. Because you would have been tempted to, uh, you know, Boba something off of uh, Fen Rao, and Fen Rao just tootled off and went off the board. You know, he was in a real s sharp position. and So we've got a range two from Fen on Dengar here. Uh, no tokens, uh, sorry, Dengar does have a focus. Oh, come on. Oh, that's hit that's crit. game. That's a dead Dengar. Now Dengar will have a revenge shot. Um, and his simultaneous fire shot. He doesn't get the revenge shot, so he's just getting the simultaneous fire shot. Uh, focusing for two on Fenral. Fenral rolling three dice because it's range two. No. Oh, that's it's, right. He's got the crit. He's shooting a cavil, isn't he? Uh, yes. Yes, he would actually shoot a cavil. That would make sense. Two dice. Looks like a range two obstructed shot. Naldra's got no range. I mean, I think the game's in the bag for Jeff. But I think we're going to see them play it out. Well, I mean, you want to play it out. It's a it's it's a hot match. You play to the end. I remember. I have I have faith in Hero and Ultra. She can solo, get Cavill or. I can't I can't bring myself to say Fenrau or or a contracted scout. So. Uh, well, I mean, it, it just goes to show that Fenrau is an amazingly strong piece in this game of X Wing Dev. But the so wrong as the can wrong crit, green. yeah, the the wrong crit at the wrong time, and your ship can go poof. It's just like a shadow caster. Yeah. Shadow casters get damaged engine, and then they're over. I mean, imagine if the Kylo Ren card let you choose any crit in the deck, but it didn't go through shields. That would be a very different match. That'd um, be dirt. That'd be dirt. Let me just finish off Kelvin's season here because he... Uh, go for it. Had, you know, he's, he's, he's put forth a, a valiant effort this season. I think this is the fifth time that he's made uh, cut. Uh, he, uh, he's done well in the PTL for, for a very long time. So he played against Mike Reverso and played uh, his Death Rain, Upsilon, two Sinars. And Mike had... Uh, Nadrew, two Black Suns, uh, and he won that 100 to 17. He then played against Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson had Jake, Tycho, and, an, and a Nave Squadron E-Wing. Kelvin flew Rush Hour. Yeah. Um, How'd that go? Early. Actually, it was 100 to 40. It's a pretty close match. Um, I mean, those Bombers, you lost two of them, so that means they, they go down. And then Kelvin's last match of the regular season was apparently a total corker of a match between him and Aaron P, our judge for this evening. Aaron always gives a good game. Well, the two of them have one game against each other every season, and it's yeah. never uneventful. It's always no. a great match. And Aaron won that one 100 to 37. Um, and uh, Aaron had uh, a four ship uh, Tony Mine Lake list. I have to sneeze. Much Sorry, better. Sorry, folks. Uh, and then Kelvin had two Sinars, uh, 
Backdraft and uh, another TIE SF, the Special Forces TIE. He sent me that list today, but with cruise missiles on the two taps. Well, it looks amazing. And and targeting synchronizer. Cruise missiles on those TIE Advanced prototypes are going oh. to be 25-point javelins. I love it. Uh, Kelvin then flew his top eight match against Emily. Emily had uh, a PTL favorite, which is Double Fire Spray, Boba Fett and Kath Scarlet versus Kelvin's uh, Nora Miranda Ahsoka. Ugh, that we was saw a, Jeff fly, that was a slug we saw match. Joe fly that. I watched that. I watched. I judged that game. That was just they just slugged it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was told that the uh, the game does not reflect the score because because yeah. Kelvin definitely won that one 100 nothing. It was a great match to watch. Um, and then yeah, uh, Kelvin. Uh, we just uh, I'm not going to talk about Kelvin's top four match no. because. Obviously, spoiler alert, he won it because he's in the finals. But Absolutely. We, <laughs> that, that is yet to go. That video has not been put out yet. That's true. But this one's going to be out after that one, so we can talk about the fact that Kelvin beat uh, Joe in his I top I mean, I match. did just say maybe 20 minutes ago that Joe dropped that list like a cake on the floor. Yeah, but I don't listen to you all the time when you talk, right? That's so. fair. <laughs> I mean, I don't say a lot of good stuff. It's just a lot of nonsense comes pouring out. It's true. So Jeff taking more damage from Analdra on... Cavill off the board. Uh, Kelvin using Analdra's ability there? Must have. Or did he just take one from the TLT? It was one from the TLT? Yeah, it was one from All the right. TLT. My bad. You, Analdra's ability rarely, if ever, gets used. It's cutesy with the, uh, whatever, the ion zapper getting your shields back. The pulse ray shield? Sure, whatever. Yeah. But, meh. Meh. In this case, he's a 14-point Atani battery. Let's make him more expensive and maybe get at one shield back to spend it. I don't know. So I'm seeing, I'm guessing here that Kelvin's going to try and block Fenn and shoot at that scout because you know, he's got a better chance of killing a scout than I Fenn mean, at this point. I mean, that's the best opportunity here. Um, oh, God. Come on, Aaron. But. So the jump master doing a green two left. Probably going to take a target lock for his ordinance. And then we've got the three bank coming oh. in from Naldra. Makes sense because if Jeff two banked here, Fen will probably not have arc on uh, on an Aldra. Nope, Jeff just calling that, going for the two straight, seeing an angle opportunity, missing everybody clinch. Oh, misses the rock. I mean, when this exact situation happened earlier with Cavill, we said Cavill was dead, but uh, an Aldra isn't Cavill. Uh, and Aldra's taking a five die shot oh. from Fenrau, spending it the target lock. It helps if you roll really well, I think. I think that Jeff has definitely had that rewarding for him this time, and just puts Go, the crit uh, in for insult to injury. I mean, that's takes that. That's game, boys. So we had a quick, uh, quick final here tonight. Uh, Thirty-two minutes left in the match, but you know what? We had some great videos leading up to this final. We had two fantastic players who have shown what you can do when you take a top tier list. Uh, thing. And none of them flew anything ridiculous on the way out. Well, it's it's that's the difficulty about the PTL is you got to make it to the finals. And you still got to have something good to exactly. use. So we'd like to thank uh, 401 Games, and most especially we'd like to thank our friends at VWTV Live, Victor, for helping us cast. Yeah, Victor and Travis. Uh, and, and Victor and Travis for helping us uh, cast and cut and uh, broadcast everything. And, of course, uh, your two... Uh, friends from here on Timbo Slice. I'm Devin M. And we're going to sign off tonight, folks. We're the PTL.